listening to Unregular Radio. Welcome, welcome. Hey, 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 we're back live. Hotter than ever. That's right, two hotheads where activism happens here on Unregular Radio. If you're in Boston or surrounding community, it is hot. It is there. darn hot. You should be very careful. It's like a sauna in here. I, we're like, we're, I feel like we're hanging out in like a rough and... Or like a Russian mob guy's house. Yeah, but it's starting to get better. They they position fans around. They did, us they now. Did. It's like actually, <laughs> wow. It is. That, that was a good, so. good uh, setup because when we came in here, it was really bad. That's right. Radio Land, you're gonna have to uh, you're gonna have to deal with the AC today. Yeah, but it's all right. We got a great show. Huge show. Yeah, the show is gonna get hot today. Um, we've got all kinds of things happening uh, today and this weekend and Monday. We should let all our uh, friends and. Fans know that we don't have our cell phones on us today. So yeah, whoops. If you're trying to reach us, call us on the studio line, 617-206-1050. Don't be texting me because I'm telling you, I was at like 200 texts already. I was over the limit before I left the house. and I left Limits? The text. You know how you have uh, limits on how many you can store? Oh, yeah. I never yeah, erase yeah, yeah, my yeah. goddamn texts, so mm-hmm. I always have to delete them. And uh, I'm telling you, it's way over the limit already today. So <laughs> don't text me. Don't call me. Unless you're calling the streak. 617-206-1050. And that includes our uh, guests and our callers. Unless you, you're trying to reach us on Facebook, that's another way. You best call the studio. We, we got, hopefully, who do we have calling in today? Well, uh, we got uh, Garrett Kirkland. Hopefully. Hopefully. Going to be calling in. And, uh, you know, we've got... Uh, yeah, where's he, what is he doing? What are we talking to him about? Uh, well, we're going to talk to him about a few things. We're going to talk to him. things. Uh, you know, there was a, uh, an event that happened today at the Brick Fusion Center. What is that, the brick? Um, the brick. Well, the brick is a, what's called a fusion center, and uh, they act as an intermediary kind of informational data analyzing uh, unit that kind of marries the federal state. I think um, it's called the Boston uh, Regional Intelli- Intelligence Center, maybe? That's sure. It, something like that. Awesome. Yeah. It's like the feds, the spies. All the spies get together. And they yeah, have well, one I place mean, yeah. where they spy on everyone and the collect Facebook the data workers and share and, it. You know, and, the, the people that sit and listen to the radio show. Yeah, they stalk you know. us. They stalk our radio show. They stalk the Freedom Rally. They stalk the Occupy movement. You know, yeah. doing important stuff that we pay for with our tax money. Absolutely. And, <laughs> uh, you know, so, and, like, I think something that's really uh, highlighted what, like, how useless, like, these organizations are, you know, as, as someone to investigate and find potential threats you just have to look what happened at the with the bombing that just happened in Boston. Yeah, you know? that front cover from last week with uh, Chris Farone's feature story in the Dig Boston. Yeah. That really is it. I That's, mean, yeah. it's just like these guys are focusing on us who are all peaceful and for the most part. We, I mean, there might be some fringe elements who are crazy, but we're not. No. And I mean, they're focusing on people like us. We're just people who care about other people and want to make the world a better place, you know, and, and that's who these people are focusing on. And they're focusing on it because it's, easy to, it's easier to focus on us than to really do the hard work of, like, figuring out, you know, people who are and getting into circles where people really are dangerous and violent. It's just easier to demonize people who are trying to do the right thing. So that was going on today in the yeah. heat. Uh, who was going down there to the uh, we had Garrett, Brick Center? Uh, Garrett was going down there. I know... Um, Josh from up the Lowell um, was heading down there, um, and uh, all kinds of people. I think Sean, uh, Sean Typhoon was down there, uh, so a bunch of people who joined Good us. Good dude. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he made a very cool um, awesome little documentary video, a short, yeah. a short documentary. That was great. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, really good. Uh, defend the Fourth Day. I think that was his best video, actually. I, I've watched a lot of his videos, and I love that video. Yeah, I think we'll probably talk a little Defend the Fourth today, too, with Garrett. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I think the pirates were going down there, too, maybe. Hopefully. Yar. Yeah, I heard they were. Yar. 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 I put my Facebook in pirate, like, in honor of the pirate I know, I was party. checking that out. I'm like, Frank, yeah. can you translate this into yeah, hours? He's like, what's five shots of rum ago? <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. These kids. Yeah, kids these days, you these know. These pirates, these wacky pirates. Yeah, so, uh, and then uh, on Monday, actually. Uh, come Monday. Come Monday, we're going to talk to Garrett about our boy Cammy D. We've been t- we I think we might have been the first ones to talk about this, like on, on a radio broadcast or on YouTube. Yeah, you were you were the one who brought it up. Yeah, because I was uh, I I was hanging um, at my house and all of a sudden I saw it on the news and I'm like what, you know what did this kid say? And then I went and uh, looked it up and so for anyone who you know hasn't listened or hasn't heard, Cami D is a I believe he's 
18, right? Um, 17, 18. 17, 18, right, yeah. Right around there. So he's a young kid, you know, not necessarily maybe like the, the brightest bulb in the tree, but he thinks he wants to he be a rapper, right? He seems like he could be a really nice kid if he was under the direction of some good people. Yeah, that's the thing, too. I mean, you don't know what the kid's life situation is exactly. like. But at any I think rate, if he was living with us for a few months, we'd he'd be a great shape. fucking yeah. kid. That's right. Go to school. Uh, stop writing your stuff on Facebook. So anyway, he... Um, he wrote a rap on Facebook, which isn't really like a rap. It's it's like a real kind of like half-assed, like Little Wayne, like New Age rap, where they speak for most of it and then rap like I'm rhyme like you know two bars. At any rate, people didn't like it. It talked about the marathon bombings. It talked about the White House. It called the White House a house of horror. You know, that's uh, Cami D right there in the background. The best part is hear those noises. Yeah. Dun, at first, oh, you think it's your yeah. computer? Yeah, we thought up? your computer was like we thought our computer was screwed up or something wrong with our speakers or like the song was like and that's in the song and he loves it. He's smiling. Watch the YouTube video. It's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> He's a good shit. Yeah. And you so know what? He, when well, keep telling the story. So he was locked up, right? Um, and he's been locked up for a month today. One month held without bail. But basically, you know, and two, we, Frank and I and, and some other local activists. When the Methuen police posted on Facebook about how proud they were that they had this kid locked up at one point for $1 million. And they found him so quickly. Yeah, and that they were all, you know, they were on Facebook proud of it. And we, some of us went up there. A lot of people from Methuen were, like, cheering him, like, cheering the police. And then we went up there and said, this is crazy from what we see. He just made this post, and we, we posted the post, and we talked about it and all that. And, uh, you know, they... they you could tell that the police are feeling it. They know that they've kind of fucked up, but at the same time, there's no turning back for them. And it, and it just feels like, to me, like, <clears throat> if they had to do it over again, they would. Well, I don't and know. I feel mean, like that? I mean, I do, but I don't because, I mean, the judge in this situation is really the reason that he's still in jail, you know? The cops pretty much, you know, they did their job or whatever, and then they charged him what they charged him with or whatever. And like, But now, I mean, the, the, the onerous is on, I hope I pronounced that properly, but... Onerous. It's onerous. At any rate, and they should release the it. responsibility of of like either letting this kid go or really like throwing a terrorism charge at him is on the prosecutor and then on the judge. Yeah. You know, I mean, because the judge at the dangerousness hearing said that you know he had had a history of of um, you know making threats and this. Yeah, and that I'm glad other you brought thing. that up because that that's where I was trying to go and I kind of lost my brain there. But it's so hot in here today. But it is. It there was a kind of on that Facebook post. You could tell that there were a couple different cliques at Methuen High School. And that this kid seemed to, like he got picked on. One mother was proud that her son knocked the fuck out of Cammy. Yeah, she, knocked she, him out. She literally posted She's, that yeah. on, on, on you know, the She said that Cammy was picking website. on a girl. I don't believe it. I think that Cammy D was being picked on. And he posted this thing. And it wasn't really that big of a deal. And they made it out to be a big deal. And uh, I think that one of the kids that was picking on Cammy D are the ones that called the police. I mean, the... You, the Every high school is going to have these little beefs among people, yeah. right? It's yeah, about no, exactly. class and status and coolness and popularity, and you're a child. Now it's, it's calling it terrorism charges yeah. for the kid had no guns. He had no weapons. He had no bombs. He had no intent. He didn't look at him, talk to him. I mean, we can see it. I can see it in his videos. And, and if, he get, if we get him out, which I hope we do, he's got an open invitation to come down here and be on our show. Yeah, absolutely. We're absolutely. not scared of Cammy Day. Yeah, no. You know, he's 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 more than welcome down. Maybe we we'll can We'll smoke him up if he's 18 too. We'll get him high. I don't know about all that. <laughs> well, maybe not, Frank. <laughs> we, we we have day jobs, you know, I get fired. <laughs> but That's uh, right. Two hot heads we're actually talking about that. Cammy uh uh-huh. you know what it is. This that kid, Cammy D. I don't really care what you say about me cause I just saw you any day. You already know that I'm straight. No I am not gay. You're listening to Unregular Radio. Back live, two hotheads. Where activism happens. And uh, we do manage to have somebody on the phone. We do, we do. We it's happening, ladies and gentlemen. We did, we did. We got a big assist from uh, Josh, our producer, hooking this up for us. That's right. Because we were like shit out of luck today. We had no phones, no <laughs> nothing. and We made it, though. Josh we made it. Us. We made it happen. And he's that's texting. It. He's, he's doing all the work. That's Thank right. you, Josh. That's so organizing right there. Yeah. That. <laughs> me, and Frank, me and Frank are just having we're a couple beers here. Yeah, we're, we're just like, Jeez. we're at the beach. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah, so we got Garrett Kirkland on the phone. Or Garrett with the, with the uh, one T. One T. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it for me. Yeah, Garrett Kirkland. Why don't we explain who Garrett is? I think some people know. But 
Garrett's an Garrett? uh, activist from, uh, and a friend from around Massachusetts here mm-hmm. and uh, New England. Uh, and uh, he's been involved in, uh, in the Fed, uh, most recently Defend the Fourth and uh, Pirate Party. And now we've got um, a new um, iron in the fire with uh, Cammy D, uh, who we talked about a little bit at the beginning of the, uh, the show. And, uh, yeah, making things happen. And you're also in an event today, too, right, Garrett, in action? Yeah, today we were out with the kindly folks from Mass Ops um, at the Fusion Center in Roxbury, saying hello to the Boston police and their warrantless searching of us and how we're kind of sick of it. Did you get any response from them? No, they they probably stayed inside the building and just let us run our miles. It was too hot. <laughs> they had a, it was an air conditioning day for them. They, they, they didn't uh, take any risks like we're doing today. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, That's some good response from the people driving by. There, we got a lot of us. We had uh, we had a gentleman up in an orange jumpsuit with a, a black bag over his head, and we had props to that guy. No kidding, uh, right? But yeah, the crowd loved it. Really, what were people doing when they saw that? Uh, just a lot of beeping and waving. You know, there wasn't much pedestrians out. Everybody was on their cars, they see. Yeah, that's and, awesome. And did you guys have some signs down there too? Yeah, we had uh, actually a couple. You saw a couple of young ladies actually ran into a poster that uh, one of the uh, kinetic theorists, the mass up anonymous, there put up, and just happened to come on down there with some signs because we didn't have any signs. And so some random bystander jumped in in the action, made up some quick signs, and came by. That's great. That's super awesome, and that's how you know it gets done as activists. So, what is uh, what was what was the main the like the main theme of the of the of the protest today? Was it? I mean, because for those people who don't know, the brick is yeah. is a fusion center, right? Where they like compile information about mostly activists, you know. Um, so what was uh like? What were people saying? What do people want out of it? Yeah. So the the big thing we're pushing today, um, you know, was was really Fourth Amendment advocacy. Um, you know, you don't have a right to randomly wiretap us or you know to to wiretap us and mass without any discrimination um, and. and back them up into these giant databases. You need warrants. Like, we have a Fourth Amendment. And that's, uh, everyone who came out there, you know, that's pretty much what we're pushing. Uh, you know, was, we had a, a good friend, Alex, from the Center for Digital Fourth Amendment right out there as well. And it's, you know, that's, that's what these big beefs on these fusion centers is. There's no discrimination when they're doing searches or wiretaps or reading your emails or taking your biometrics off of cameras or, or what else they're doing. It's yeah. not way out of control. Yeah, and there's no regulation, restriction, rules, any guidelines that they are willingly or have to follow. I mean, they could gather this information, share it with anybody, uh, store it forever, and and there's Absolutely. like you said, no warrant, no evidence, nothing presented. The government should just and no rules really create a file right? on you. I mean, there's no there's no there's really no, any rules. Yeah, there's not a single rule for any of this crap. Um, I mean, most recently, like some people will remember that there was an article. Um, it was an independent. I don't remember who put the article out, but the Boston Fusion Center's big like task that it was on was tracking down Occupy Boston. It wasn't for getting terrorists, and there was like even a federal level study where you know, the government even acknowledged that this is not helping deter terrorism. But like not at all. 78 or whatever fusion centers that are stockpiling all of our information, they sure as hell are getting good at cracking down on us. Yeah, and What's they're it? confusing the police. The police don't know what to prior- prioritize because there's so much information out there on us. Well, that's the thing. And then, like you said, like. You know, you look at credit reports. This is something that was kind of a new, new phenomenon over time where those are regulated. You only can keep, the corporations can only keep a credit report on you for seven years. The same thing with other, other things like uh, even the Cori, Cori checks in the databases for jobs in Massachusetts have rules and laws on them. These databases are going to be used by private corporations. They're going to be used by government agencies. There's no rules and all of this, this is where it's all going. There's no restrictions or regulation. We're not out in front of it. We're way behind. Yeah, I mean, I think... It, I, I'm sorry, Gary, go ahead. What's, what's really sick, so, I mean, we're saying there's no rules, and, like, essentially, like, if you look at it from, like, you know, the Constitution and, like, the foundations of this country and what the actual law of the land is, you're right, there's no rules. Uh, but they actually do have some rules, uh, which are even more allowing them to have none. Uh, for instance, the one I can think of off the top of my head is that anything on you or any data you have stored for more than six months becomes searchable uh, without a warrant. They can get like some special like private secret warrant and they can search it as long as it's been on a computer for more than six months. Like apparently there's an expiration on your your rights to not be searched. Like this is ridiculous crap that's coming out of this. 
how, how do they decide whether or not it's been on your computer for more, for more than six months un- unless they look at your computer to figure out what's been on there for a certain amount of period of time? That's, you know, that's one of the, that's one of the problems with any of us. They, 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 they check it first, and then they'll build the case back with that. Right. They're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. But if you're an innocent person and they checked you out anyways and violated your rights to privacy and to be secure in your person, then it, they're just never going to tell you about it. Yep. Yeah, you get a massive story like the AP wiretap. Like, look what they're doing for Christ's sake. Yeah, I mean, it's it's all the way up to the like the Justice Department, and and you know, like like you just said, Garrett. You know, there there are some um, there are some rules, but there's there's no oversight. That's the problem, right? Is that, the, that there's no oversight? And um, well, I I would say that there's a ton of oversight coming down from Homeland Security. I mean, yeah, I don't think really? Well, yeah. Is, <laughs> wrong kind of oversight. <laughs> so, yeah, like, yeah. There's like, that's like the dark side of the force. Yeah. I'm Darth Vader's yeah. running the oversight. <laughs> <is what you're laughs> saying. Yeah, exactly. But and like, he's actually not that he's bad. He's probably office to somewhere in D.C. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's one of those windows, like, with the, what is it, the, uh, it's, uh, pen- it's not the oct- Is it an octagon? Oh yeah, the pentagon. The octagon the windows. Octagon. It's some oh. shape. The shape windows from Star Wars. You guys know what I'm talking about. Oh, now I'm recalling. Yes, <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, of course I do. At any rate, I saw that. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, like you remember uh, Garrett from um, when we used to mar- when we marched in the marches last year at Occupy. You know, I mean, what what, what the cops did? They had the, the camera on the pole, right? And yep. they would stand there and they would film every single face as it walked by. You know. Who knows? Putting putting our faces into facial recognition software, you know, systems. They're just dumping all that into these databases. They have, they literally have a profile on every single person that's been out in public in the past couple of years. Yeah. Like whether you're a protester or just some jerk off going to Seven Eleven. And that's the truth of it too. People don't realize that. Like, yeah, no, this is. isn't just activists now. They're going to collect databases of everybody, well, yeah. so that if you have a come up, if you have a come up of done, done something wrong, they're going to be like, oh, we have a ten year record, and you didn't collect, uh, you didn't do this. Six years ago, you you dropped a cigarette on the ground. There's a fine. Oh, uh, you you forgot to pay this. Like they they will get you on everything. Yeah. Or they're or they're going to monitor your Facebook, right? And you're going to end up like Cami D. Yeah, there you go. Right. Let's talk about Cami D. Well, could we, well, I, I got to stop you right there. They were not monitoring his Facebook. No, they were. It was a it was a tip off that began the series of events that got him um, held for thirty plus days now uh, for using freedom of speech. Yeah, it seemed like it was a tip-off um, from some of the posts on Facebook to the Methuen Police Department. Uh, Frank and I were defending Cammy D to Methuen Police Department on Facebook. And some of the Methuen residents were with us, and some of them seemed like they wanted Cammy D locked up. And some of them seemed like they knew Cammy D and that they had an extra grind. Uh, one of the mothers seemed very proud that her son had knocked out Cammy D in a fist fight. Yep. And to me, it seems like, you know, you got kids picking on each other in the high school. Which happens in every high school. Isn't, isn't that really what this whole thing is really about and not terrorism? Terrorism. You know what? I mean, this, this Cammy D, I mean, I, I honestly, I look at the profile of what's going on and I look back through, like, his, you know, his, uh, his record that, you know, Judge Lynn Rooney in, in, in Lawrence District is saying is so dangerous that they can't let him out to a threat to society. He's like, going to a fist fight in, like, 2006 with some kids. He got his ass kicked a couple of years ago by some other kid, and he got into a scuffle with his sister last year. Like, really? This is your dangerous criminal? Like, I see a kid who's, who's probably more or less a misfit in this community, and he's trying to be cool. And, like, he wants to do this rap thing, and, and you know, he's trying to, like, do his lyrics and, and whatever. You can have your own thoughts on the tastefulness or, or the quality of such things, but that, that's all it was. He's just, just rapping, like, you know, we were in high school. We wrote this stuff in notebooks. Like me, I was outcast kid. Dude, I know. I probably know exactly where he's coming from. I haven't talked to him personally, so I don't know. But it just seems that way. But you know, I wrote stuff in a notebook that if it was up on Facebook, people would have searched my house or whatever. It it just blows my mind. Like how they can be holding him. They searched him because of these lyrics. And yeah. because what happened is a student tipped off. Well, this is the story that comes down. Is a student tipped off James um, James. Weymouth, the associate principal of the Methuen High School, says that there's this lyric up on his website that they're worried about. So then he tips off the school's uh, patrolman, who is um, James Meller. Um, so James Meller then detain- finds him, um, Cammy, arrests him an hour later, about 1.30 p.m., um, that was May the 1st. They proceeded, and, and the, the patrolman stated that, you know, Cammy was, was polite and cooperative during and after the arrest. 
Um, but he proceeded through a full search of his home, of, of everything for him, to make sure he didn't have weapons or this, that, and the other thing. And they found nothing except for stacks of, like, lyrics and, and him just wanting to be a hip-hop star or whatever. There was no weapons. There was no specific threat in those lyrics that were online. And at the end of the day, it's like, catch and release. Let the damn kid go. You had nothing. And, you know, I understand people got alarmed. They're like, oh, you know, this thing happened, and so they wanted to check it out. Like, I don't necessarily agree, but I'm not going to be like, well, you're such a moron for doing that, but... You checked him, and he has nothing. Thirty days now for saying something, they have nothing. I know, no oh. weapons, no, no, no yeah, evidence, no he, manifesto he, at he, home, yeah, no evidence yeah. that he really intended anyone any harm beyond just saying, "Hey, you kids, picking on me. I, I'm, I want to be a rap star, and I'm going to be a rap star, and I'm going to laugh at you." That's basically what his thing was. It was like yeah. nothing, nothing. But it was written in rap, so it said, "I'm going to kill people," which in rap means just I'm going to be think like it better said than that. you. We should quote well, the. No, it really did. Cool. It did. No, I don't know. I don't know about that, Frank. <laughs> no, it did. He's, <laughs> it didn't specifically name anyone either. No, no, not <laughs> anyone specific. No. And we say, I'm, he, I, said, "He said, kill people." He said, "Look what I'm going to do, kill people." Yeah. And that was part of an out of context lyric from a larger yeah. lyric. Yeah, but, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. And you we all heard I mean, that kind of stuff in hip hop. Well, like, we say on. it on the show. We That's say we're point. killing it. We're killing it. That's like a, a phrase that we use all the time on. Killing like, it right now. Yeah, we're killing and it. He, I think this interview's and killing he made it. A metaphor um, about blowing up. Like his popularity would blow up bigger than the Boston Marathon. Like what he would do would be bigger than the Boston Marathon. Like those two things were like, you know, extremely distasteful and probably not smart to say. But regardless. He's seventeen, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. He's just a, he's what just do you a punk expect? kid. That's all. I mean, kid or, from you know, or just kid. a young kid who wants to like prove something. You know, I mean, it's 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 so ridiculous. Cool, I can't think. I can't think of any other eighteen-year-old that do dumb things. <laughs> really? Right? right? You know what I mean? Like, like yeah, I know. Every other eighteen-year-old is like ready, and, like and with what? a suit and tie, going to Harvard. Yeah, really. And what was the dumb thing he did? He wrote some rap lyrics. Like, come on. Yeah, really? So yeah, we, we're mobilized. We're we're very upset about this, and we is actually a pretty substantial list that's growing by the day. Yeah, tell us about sure that. is. Who's coming down on Monday to, to help Cammy D and the so People's on, Hammer on that's Monday? Good, yeah. Within one week's notice about this hearing, we've um, we've got representatives coming from the Mass Pirates. Yeah, we've got Mass Our- Off. We've Our- got the Senate Digital Fourth Amendment Rights slash Warrantless dot org. Nice. Um, the person, the, the organization that was already working on this um, before us late to the game started um, catching wind was the Center for Rights, Fight for the Future, who I've been coordinating with directly. Um, and he's been kind of coordinating with the actual defense uh, public defender and family. Um, the ACLU Massachusetts has confirmed sending two observers for Monday's hearing. Yeah. Um, they're not going to be necessary. Hmm? Yeah, we're we're um, applauding. Yeah. <laughs> oh, go ahead. No, we're done. We're applauding. applauding. Carry we're, on. We're applauding. <laughs> we, we like to hear okay, that they're cool. sending lawyers. Yeah, so they're, the ACLU mass is coming down. Um, they're two observers, and I've actually talked to them directly as well. Um, they're not necessarily with our group, but they're going to be as legal observers, um, which has made us more comfortable. Now that now that we've got confirmation out of them, we've actually put up the court, the trial, the hearing details for so probable cause hearing um, up publicly on our Facebook and other places around the web. And then so beyond these guys, the ACLU Mass, and we still got some more. KOP Productions, our longtime good friend, my my well, not sorry, a long time for me, but my damn good friend KOP. He's he's gonna come down and do some video with us before it. He's offering all of his support. He's gonna be in he's gonna be in that courtroom. That's my brother uh, right there, the King of Pot. Yes, sir, KOP Productions dot com. I I can't say how much I love that dude. Uh and then we also got our boys from Lowell who are also part of the Defend the Fourth Coalition. Um they also have a Revolution is Evolution project and they're mobilizing as well. Um I mean just in a week's notice we've got, you know, at least twenty five bodies going in there representing seven different organizations. It's awesome. Are you going down too, Frank? Couple? I am. I will be there. So you get to two hotheads too on regular. That's We're right. Be representing. The show will Adam right on the wall. <laughs> Absolutely. And this yep. is just the beginning. I mean, after moving past this hearing, we need to see what's going on with this. Because even if they let the guy go tomorrow, um, you know, and they apologize and they dropped everything, there's still the fact that he was held for 30 days deprived of his liberty for something that he said, even after they searched him, you know, and found nothing. I know. So yep. there's, there's still a huge, massive problem. Um, but, you know, our first effort is to get Cammy D.O., you know, regain his liberty for him. So we're going to be, you know, silent solidarity in the courtroom, respectable, dressed appropriately. We're going to give support, and we're going to show that, you know, we're watching what's going on with the First Amendment right now. Awesome. I'm so glad you took this up, Garrett. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. I mean, it's going to be great, and um, I'm definitely proud to uh, be going there and be there to, uh, you know, stand up for what's right with you. And uh, all the other awesome organizations are going to be there, you know. 
And uh, it's it's really cool that the uh, the ACLU is going to be there because they're not just there for you know Cami D. You know they're going to be there for for us too as activists. You know as legal observers to um, you know make sure that because we're going there you know as a defense to the to what's right you know that they don't try to bring the hammer down on any of us um, or anything like that. So that's that's awesome and it's and it's going to be a great event. And uh, what time are we getting started there? So um, court session opens at 9 a.m. on Monday. Uh, we are having a meetup uh, just prior at quarter of 9. We'll be meeting on the corners of Appleton Street and Dewan Street. Um, and that, that courthouse is right actually on 2 Appleton Street. Um, so at 845, we'll be gathering there with just a quick briefing. Um, you know, we're trying to be as organized as possible. We're asking, you know, nobody enters the, the hearing room until Candy's thing is up because we want to make it, you know, absolutely certain that we're supporting him in that case and we're not there just random onlookers and whatnot and to try to avoid um, the judge um, holding up proceedings because of spectacles or whatever. So 9 o'clock session opens. Um, you know, with court, we don't know. It could be prompt. It could be hurry up and wait. We don't know. Uh, but we're going to be there at 9. And that's in Lawrence again? That's Lawrence District Court. To Appleton Street, Lawrence, Massachusetts. That's uh, right up on the North Shore, right by the New Hampshire border, um, towards the East Coast here. And w- and dress for court. Dress for court. Um, we you know we will absolutely not appreciate anybody who does not come dress for court. Um, we have to send an important important message on both a public relations and a um, you know just a civil message to the court that a you know we are very serious about this and we're going to act very professionally. And we are, you know, in that seriousness, tread carefully. And it's going to be an unspoken warning. We're not going to disrupt. We're not going to mock or do anything. We'll let the court mock itself as they continue these proceedings and just give them that warning now. Because we're going to blow this thing up going past it. And I hope I don't get arrested for saying that on the radio. It's just a <laughs> metaphor. <laughs> yeah, it's just a metaphor. Well, don't come to Garrett. Right. And, and if you do, like, if you're really like, I'm not dressing up for court, man, then stand outside and hold a sign and, you know, yeah. let people know what's going on. Um, and uh, it's going to be an awesome event. I can't wait to go. And uh, so what, what? So we got this going on on Monday, and then moving forward, you know, um, like off the heels of this brick um, event that we had today, did, um, did was there some discourse about where defend the fourth will be going from this? Um, you know, as far as like kind of future actions and things like that. Um, nothing, nothing too serious. I mean, we're pretty much we're all going full balls to the wall on this Cammy thing. Um, because as people that speak out, especially against Homeland Security and like Transportation Safety Administration and all that crap, um, we're you know extremely concerned about what the implications on the First Amendment are. Um, so really, we're, we're going to be channeling our efforts into this um, and seeing this through. And you know, I, I myself be putting all my resources on this. I mean, unless I see checkpoints or something popping up where I have to start taking on more, I, I really want to hammer on this thing. Absolutely, the people's hammer is coming down. Absolutely. Yeah. It's the first, man. We can't talk about anything else if we can't talk. That's right. That's right. You can't. You can't, man. You absolutely can't. And it's getting yeah, that way. And I um, just I do want to throw a bit quickly, too, going past this. You know, Cam's family and is under, I'm sure everyone who's ever had any contact with the court system knows, they're under tremendous financial stress right now, though. Um, so one project we do have actively churning, but no, nothing firm yet. Is we're going to do a benefit show for him. Um, locations and everything else are actually to be determined. We're going to talk about it moving past Monday. Um, again, you know, we want to focus on Monday, so we haven't really known anything else. We're going to do a benefit show, and that's you know definitely going to be cranked out here on you know the two hotheads and, and all of our friends. You know, make sure everybody knows. Awesome. Yeah, I, that that sounds great. I, I heard, I heard some. I heard some good things about that event when it's going to go down. So do we uh, have any idea what you're open might go for that? Or it's going to be up in the in the in like that uh you know the up lower Merrimack Valley area, right? Uh, we're well, we're going back and forth between whether um, you know to do it up in that area, the local area, or to bring it a little closer towards the city where we can get maybe more people. But you know. I think we're leaning towards doing it up in like the Methuen, oh, Maple, Lawrence kind of area, you know, where, where it would be more appropriate. Yeah, we got to get we, yeah, we, a lot of things to be considered. Yeah. We, I, I did a big action up in uh, Methuen a few years ago at the city council with the mayor yeah. in Prospect Hill. And let me tell you, those guys, they are very popular up there. We should, I don't think that they would be able to perform because they're in such high demand and performance, but we might be able to get some of them down there to promote it. I think that would help a lot, too. Yeah, everybody. Everything helps. Yeah, we do. I mean, we're aiming um, 
I think we're going to do like a big old hip hop show, and um, we're going to try to draw some people who are really going to push the First Amendment. Um, I can't say any more than that. I wish I could. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds exactly. Like be a nice I mean, hopefully, Cammy D can rock the set too. Uh, yeah, Hopefully, yeah, I'm hoping that when we do this benefit show, with, you know, we're going to be raising money to help like reimburse his family, and not necessarily to continue the ongoing legal struggle. Um, it would be awesome if we could, you know, he's he's given his liberty back to at least be on the outside, and then, you know, they should dismiss everything and apologize to him and, and bend over backwards, but that won't happen. But. Oh no, they're going to get the shit suit out of him. I mean, they, 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 there's money coming this kid's way. I mean, you know, he's clearly like been wrongfully held. You know, there's a, there's a huge lawsuit there. Yep. And now you definitely got an invitation on this show. We, Frank and I have already put that out. He can come in any time he wants. That's right. Once the, he gets out. The doors are once always open. Once we get him out, right? That's right. That's right. Well, hopefully we'll get him out. We'll get him out on Monday. Hopefully, and I will have him there next weekend. Yeah. That's the plan. That's right, uh, man. That, that should, I'm just pulling out of my butt. I don't actually have direct contact with Cammy or his defense. Uh, I've just been working with um, Evan over at the Center for Rights, who's been coordinating, uh, working directly with them. Well, I mean, it would be nice if, you know, um, the NLG or uh, the ACLU would step up and provide this kid with a lawyer, you know, because, I mean, this is kind of clear, cut, and dry in a lot of ways that it's a First Amendment issue. Yep. And, uh, you know, that's what the ACLU's job is supposed to be, is First Amendment issues. And, uh, you know, it'd be yeah, nice. Well, let's, I mean, let's, you know, let's see what they're actually doing here as yeah. they're, um, you know, they're sending their observers in. They're, I mean, we're, we're getting the people to the table right now. So let's, Yeah, that's let's, probably let's just their what, process, no yep, doubt, no yep. doubt. And we like what's going on. I mean, uh, you it know, it's awesome. Like, it's super awesome. It seems awesome. like, you know, you look at the video of, um, of him that we, we played on our show a bunch of times, Frank. And the first couple times you play it, there weren't that many views. And now you look at it, there's a lot of views of that, that yeah, video. Yeah, people yeah, are yeah. Paying, paying attention. And that's the important thing is that people are aware and getting active. And I'm so glad that you're doing this, Garrett, and getting the word out because I think it does make a difference for this kid and for all of us. This is huge. I mean, this kid's not even an activist. I mean, what about the people Maybe who have an axe to grind? Yeah. Maybe like he will be. People who go stand in front of the Federal Reserve or, or talk about Homeland Security or, or talk about the banks. Yeah. And this is the way that they create activists, too. I think uh, once Cam E.D. gets out, he might, if he starts hanging around with us or with the radio station. I'll just tell him, like, you've been drafted. Buddy. Yeah, <laughs> I drafted think he buddy. might become a, uh, an activist. I just have that feeling, federal government. <laughs> he had that lyric compared in the White House to a federal house of horrors. So, I mean, he might already be there. Yeah, he's yeah, already he's gone the right track, right? He just needs some better beats. just up to everything he was saying, so, like. <laughs> there you go. Right. Get they, they they're trying to get them when they're early before they even have a chance. So where where can people find out about this event on Facebook? Um, uh, we're on Facebook on warrantless.org. Um, the Mass Ops website has it up. I'll make sure there's a link up on the the two hot heads um, as well. Uh, and anybody, I mean anybody, can feel free to email me, Garrett M K G A R R E T M as in Michael K at gmail.com. Um, if anyone wants the RSVP, needs the information, and they can't find us on any of those sites, I'm making myself fully available to anyone. Yeah. And you're also at, uh, at Defend the Fourth. D-E-F-E-N-D. Yeah, I, I gave up the Twitter. I yeah. don't like Twitter. It's well, you're on there. The, the 140 characters or less does not suit my style. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> don't. <laughs> well, all right, brother. Thank you uh, for, uh, for coming on and telling us about what everything is going on. And, yeah, uh, yeah, thanks for giving me a platform to get it out there. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I'll be there on Monday. And um, was the mo- the meeting's going to start at 845, you said? Yeah, we're going to meet up um, at 845. And then, you know, court session starts at 9. Um, and, oh, and anybody who's coming, and we've posted this everywhere, and it's important, um, you know, you go into a courthouse, anything you don't have to bring, don't bring with yeah, you. No um, cell phone. Yeah, no if cell phones at all. You might need to identify yourself at the courthouse. Yeah, and if you do bring your cell phone... Um, I'm 99. percent I'll have my car there, and you can leave it in my car. Yeah, because they won't let you in. Yep. You got keys and keys and wallet. That's about it. Yeah, just don't even bring yeah, your. We'll, we're gonna try to have a couple vehicles up there too. Um, you know, ahead of time, so that you know people can like. Because me, I you know I might be taking like a commuter rail and stuff, so I might have to have a couple things on me. Um, so we'll try to have some vehicles there for a safe stash spot. But definitely try to bring as little as possible. You gotta go through security. No doubt. Well, that's uh, m- Monday, eight forty-five. Don't act out. <laughs> yeah, don't act a fool over there. Don't be, don't be doing your uh, Hunter S. Thompson so impression we, in the courthouse. 
<laughs> working so hard to make sure we don't have any like um, like prov- provocateurs You're down there, gonna. anybody looking to make a, a scene down there. Like, You're not that gonna. is not what today is gonna, Monday's going to be. You know who's about. going. You you got it all on lockdown. Yeah, no, and, and we and we know what we're doing. It's gonna and and for the Brick Fusion Center, it's gonna be respectful, and uh, we're gonna do what is our right to do and defend our rights. And uh, yeah, so we'll see everybody there on Monday. Amen, brother. Yeah, burrs. You're listening to Two Hotheads, where activism happens on unregularradio.com. You got an opinion about that? Yeah. Call us up. 617-206-1050. And that was Garrett Kirkland. It was Garrett Kirkland. On the phone. With one T, damn it. Yeah, yeah. I fuck that up a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's just one T. Oh, and I just swore. That's another one. Ah, fuck. All right. So give us a call. 617-206-1050. We are the Two Hotheads, where activism happens, and we will be back.